Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, non-binaries and tissue papers. Shout out to all my taco fans in the back. Those of you who know about me or have heard about me, here's what I think you're probably thinking right now. But Master J, you're alive? I thought you deleted your channel, you cookie butt. Oh, you're making a rant video on rants. It's stupid. Could you made one on JP? Ah! Attention seeker, go eat a cucumber, you muffin head. And to that I say, how dare you call me a muffin? That's insulting. That's racist. I'm calling the police. But have no fear, dear children. I come in peace. I promise. But seriously, I promise. Don't burn me at the stake. And that Digby video I actually made inspired me to make this one so I can share the tips and tricks I have learned over the past few months. So you beautiful fans over there, or beautiful people or person, whoever's watching this, cannot be a dumb idiot like me. Hashtag don't be a J. Let it trend. For this topic in particular, I made sure to do a lot of research, like on ranting techniques, do's and don'ts of ranting, and arguments of fallacies. What's a fallacy, you may ask? Well, dear viewer, in ranting or arguing terms, a fallacy is a failure in reasoning that basically renders an argument invalid, or a mistaken belief, especially one based on an unsound argument. Or A unsounding argument. Why did I say Anne? But anyway, to kick this video off, let's try by like, going through some argumentative and logical fallacies that you should always keep in mind and be sure to avoid if you are ever going to make a rant. And I'll be giving my two cents on each of these fallacies and maybe even throwing in my own personal experience for that little kick. Also, I do apologize for my stuttering a bit. Even though this is a scripted video, I just tend to stutter a lot when I record these types of things, so please excuse that. <laughs> to kick this video off, let's start with one of the most commonly used fallacies around. The ad hominem fallacy, and I probably said that wrong. Basically, the ad hominem fallacy is when you use an insult as an argument or evidence to support a conclusion. And I know you guys don't speak fancy, so let me break it down for you. Let me give you an example. Say little Kevin over here wants to be president of the United States. He's like, yay, I want to be president. I'm going to make taxes lower and I'm going to build a wall. But I'm not Donald Trump. And the, these guys over here are like, oh, did you, can you believe Zach? He's trying to be president. <laughs> he was raised in a trash can. He'll never be president. That's basically what this fallacy is. And I can bet you several of you guys can think off the top of your head a whole list of people who have used this fallacy in the past. Some of them used it as like a comedic standpoint, they weren't actually being serious, but I have seen people who use it non-comedically and that's kind of sad. Because you're basically insulting the person you're trying to argue with, which makes you look very childish. And trust me, I've used this one a lot. Like, quite a lot. And I actually didn't realize how much I used it. And especially in the infamous Digby video, I definitely used that one. So PSA, kiddos out there, don't insult the people you're arguing with. It makes you look like a child. And they won't take you seriously after that. Next one. The straw man fallacy. This one I actually didn't hear about before until now. Basically, it's when you attack your opponent for a position they don't really hold. Like, you just assume they know have this position and then you just use that as an argument. Like, for example, Oh, did you hear? Kevin likes boxes! He, he totally likes to have sex with boxes! He sleeps with boxes every day! Mm-hmm, look at that idiot! That, <laughs> that's, the stupidest argue, that's the stupidest thing I've ever said. But if, actually, let me give you a better example that you might understand a bit more. The Sleepy King incident. Lim, if you don't know that one, let me try to explain a bit of it, just a tiny bit, because it goes way too deep, and I'm just gonna show, tell the basis of what happened. Well, your boy Sleepy Kink was in hot water when everyone was getting mad at him for drawing not safe for work images, considering he was 15 at the time. But considering he lives in Italy, that's actually the right age of consent, so I don't know why people were arguing in the first place, but... But all, mainly, besides all that art that he was making, people also accused him of fetishizing rape when he for sure did not hold that position and has stated many times that he doesn't fetishize that at all. You see here? You see where I'm connecting the dots here? People attacking a person for a position they don't hold. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Next to what we got here is appeal to ignorance. 
basically this is the typical oh we have no existence that aliens ever came to earth so because there's no evidence to show that aliens never came to our planet they are not real or the other side oh they, we don't have evidence that they came but 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 I th that means they're real right we don't have evidence that's basically what it means is that just because there is no evidence or we don't know everything about a certain topic doesn't make it true all the time or make it incorrect all the time. Oh me, there is no evidence to show that the Illuminati ever existed. But, dear child, they are probably smart enough to destroy all their evidence before they were captured. That's probably why they're still around to this day. YOLO. If you get what I mean, just the lack of evidence doesn't prove anything when it comes to an argument. You could prove that just because there's no evidence that this person killed this person doesn't mean that he didn't do it. Or saying, I have no evidence that this box didn't move to the other side of the room, therefore it didn't move. It could have moved and grown legs and <laughs> run to Mexico for all you know. You have no proof. And because of this, ignorance is not... Don't base your entire argument off of a, oh, we have no evidence of it. That's, that's kind of silly. Just as silly as a box growing legs and running away. Moving on once again, the false dilemma. <laughs> the false dilemma fallacy. This one can be summed up in one example. Oh, either you love Tom Tort or you're not an Edgewell fan. I'm just kidding, that's not a real example. Here's a better example. Either you love me, or you hate me. <laughs> Either we go to war, or we appear weak in the eyes of the enemy. These are more common in dilemma-based arguments. Basically, when you present two different options, when there are actually more options than you state. Like, once again, the either you love me or you hate me argument. Just saying you only have two options to choose from is incredibly fallacious. And also, that's a very nice word. You are looking quite fallacious today, my dear. Alright, alright, I'll stop. Let's move on. Okay, this next one actually has a lot of hilarious examples. Oh, let me give you a good one right here. Well, shit. That Tom Tord video I made a year ago has 40k. But it freaking sucks, and I didn't put any effort into it, and people keep pointing it out. And it's the main thing that people know, for me, know me for on this channel. Maybe I should get rid of it. Or at least private it or do something to it. Because I hate looking at it. What do you think, Carrie? <gasps> Are you crazy? If you delete the video, then your channel will go down. If your channel goes down, then YouTube will go down. If YouTube go down, then we will all lose our devices and our internet. And then the universe will blow up and then we'll all die. And then Hitler will come to power and... You see where I'm going with this? Definition states, the slippery slope fallacy, however, suggests that unlikely or ridiculous outcomes are likely when there is just not enough evidence to think so. Like the example I just said before. It's basically when you come to or go to really ridiculous conclusions based on one thing. For that example, me getting rid of the Tom Tord video that I just want to burn! Now people would assume that if that video goes down, Everything will go to hell, and Hitler will come to power. Well, I don't want Hitler coming back. And who needs Hitler when you got Tom Tord? <laughs> Usually I kind of do this one sometimes, where I people say one thing, and I just go off on a tangent and say all the things that could possibly happen. But usually, like I said, it's for comedic purposes, because IRL, I'm kind of a goof. Or at least around my family, and then around people I don't know, I get kind of quiet. But usually, I would make these kind of jokes where I just, you tell me one thing, and I just go off and make it sound the most, as ridiculous as possible. Like, you drop that cookie. Now then, that the, all the bugs down on the ground that you just killed are going to start a war. And they're going to be like, we're domination! We'll get our giant bug robots! And then take over the world and kill us all. And Yeah, I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> Quietly draws bug giant robot for that joke. Replaces all meme animators with bugs. Okay, giant bug robots aside, let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry, so can't stop laughing at both. Next one, hasty generalization. That one should be self-explanatory. Don't generalize and don't let your generalization be your entire argument. Moving on. Next few ones, I'll put an explanation, or at least a definition, of the term, and then a, a funny example, just to get the point across, or at least to help you understand it better. 
a what you call red herring. It's a distraction from the argument, typically with some sentiment. That seems to be relevant, but really isn't on topic. Hey Johnny, did you do your math homework? Uh, yeah, no, actually no I didn't. I was eating cookies on the couch. Ooh, what type of cookie? Oh, you know, hazelnut. Hazelnut? Uh, you know those are from that one country that doesn't exist anymore. What are you talking about? Of course that country exists. I haven't seen it on a map. What what map? I I have maps in my closet. What closet? The closet of closets. Do you have pencils in there? No, I was using it for my homework. Oh hey, yeah, where's your homework? No. The two pro quo two pro quo. I'm sorry. I I don't speak Latin. The two pro quo Latin for you too is also called the appeal to hypocrisy because it distracts from the argument by pointing out the hypocrisy in the opponent. Hey Kevin, why'd you steal your why'd you steal that box? Because you did too. What? You stole that box from Canada. But, but, no, you're a box stealer. But are you? No, you're the real criminal here. You stole from Brazil. Wait, you just said it was Canada. I said it was Brazil. But you just said Canada. So you're racist to Canadians now? That's it, I'm calling the police. The casual fallacy. This fallacy occurs when you mistake something for the cause just because it came first. Jimmy was here last night with his black cat and muffin. And his muffin walked under a, la a ladder. And then she broke my mirror. Then, then, then my girlfriend broke up with me. And then I bailed my class. Then I had to drop out of college. And now I'm living on the streets. And Jimmy stole my house. It's the cat's fault. I, I have bad luck because of that cat. And Jimmy... How can you do this to me, Jimmy? I thought we were friends. Appeal to authority. This one is basically referring to irrelevant authorities. Like people who clearly have knowledge of a certain topic, but talk about irrelevant things. Like if a foot doctor was trying to talk to you about psychiatry or how to do someone's teeth. That's irrelevant, right? They know how to do feet stuff, not cure to your depression. If that's the case, I need to go see a dentist. But anyway, a good example of this would be like, I only buy Fruit of the Loom underwear because Michael Jordan says it's the best. Is Michael Jordan an underwear scientist or an underwear model? Maybe, who knows? <laughs> this next one's gonna be the last one we're gonna talk about right now. Appeal to pity. The fallacy appeals to the compassion and emotional sensitivity of others w when these factors are strictly not relevant to the argument. Basically, it's when we mistake feelings for facts or vice versa. Mostly just the first one, feelings for facts. Mentioning that old Digby video I made one last time, I used that one a lot. Actually, my whole entire argument against Digby was based off of my own anger. Not of him, because before that video, I didn't even know who he was. I just wanted to throw my anger at someone at the time. And because of this, I let my emotions become facts in my eyes. And because of my emotions clouded my judgment, I actually started to really believe them. The stupid things I was saying. So, you know, that's not good. Keep your feelings away from me, son. Oh, wait, Fluffer Nuggets, this is the last one. But this one's easy to understand, because it's basically... It's too self-explanatory. The bandwagon fallacy. The, you know, the whole, oh, because everyone's doing it, it's right. Or, oh, because everyone thinks this, this is right. That one's basically self-explanatory, am I right? No need to explain. And now with all the fallacies out of the way, let me give you my last two cents by giving you some tips on how to not do a Master J. Number one, research. For the love of Bob and Cookie Heaven, please, please, if you are going to show your point of view or standpoint on a topic, please have evidence or at least have researched the topic before you talk about it. Please! And don't base your entire argument off of one little piece of evidence. Kaya, okay, I'll mention it. Insert Spockter theory r drama here. <coughs> Pentagram. <clears throat> Even though I'm kind of a fan of them, but I'm just in the middle. But anyway, just research for me, please. Research for the greater good of humanity. You're saving millions and millions of lives a day. Just a research click away. Motivational speech, Master J, 2017. Make America great again. 
or YouTube, either one. Next, don't let your emotions fuel your argument. Not saying that you shouldn't put emotions into your... Why am I pausing so long? I'm sorry. We shouldn't, doesn't mean I'm telling you to not add emotion into your argument or having it be a factor, but just don't let it be the entire thing or the thing that fuels your entire argument. That's just... Ugh, oh, me and these long pauses, man. Stop! Make sure that all of the evidence you're presenting is correct. Go around, ask people, you know, to interact with others, talk about your argument or talk about the situation or whatever you're talking about. Just go talk to others, get other people's opinions on the topic to make sure that you get both sides and make sure all your evidence is correct. Because you don't want to go around with fake evidence, am I right? <laughs> Insert Spockter Theory joke here. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with those. And last little tip for you guys here. Something that has helped me in the past, and it's something that's actually pretty beneficial, is if you do make a rant video or are planning one in the process, or blah, planning in the process, or are you in the process of making one, I highly suggest sending your script to other people to see what they think. Because I know that a couple of videos I've made, I've been so paranoid about my scripts that I actually send them to a couple of my friends to make sure I'm not saying anything inappropriate or offensive, and that you guys won't kill me. Or stab me with a machete because apparently some of you actually think you've seen me IRL because yeah IRL I'm pretty hard to miss and my voice is pretty hard to miss and no I'm serious people in Digby's comments on that one video you made about me actually commented and said they think they've seen me before and that actually scares me well time to go move to another country before you go one last thing and I'll admit it after the intro of this video or at least after I started talking about fallacies, or when I started talking about the fallacies, I went off my scripts. Like, no, seriously, I have a whole type- I have a whole four-page script here talking about fallacies and all of this, and I did not read a single word of it. And I winged the rest of it for no reason, I don't know why. My brain was just like, hey, forget the script, who needs it? You're a powerful speaker! So, I'm sorry if I sound... Eh, stupid. <laughs> Even though I don't, I don't think I did too bad, but I'm sorry. I tried. I tried not winking it this time. I tried my best. My soul just was like, let me be free. Wing away. <laughs> okay, I'll be gone now. Boy. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Can you see I'm not trying to sing. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna... Have a life, never gonna get a sh nah, shrine of Digby. I'm just kidding, no, no, Digby shrine's here. <laughs> Why did I make that joke?